Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. This is the third video of the Repair Robot build and if you haven't seen the first ones, I'll leave the links on the description box below. I really think you should see them before seeing this one because things will make more sense. Off camera I did the joints for the arms and the legs, just a simple ball joint for the arms and a simple joint for the legs, just to get things a little quicker on this third video. I'll begin by showing you guys how I detailed the body of the robot. When I designed this robot, mostly in my mind, I kinda imagined what I wanted it to have the tools that it would use and have and the attachments to its body so in a way I'm kinda always making mental notes on the design of the robot so right now I'm just putting some lines on the body because I want to remind myself the things that I imagined before I mean for sure there are things that will come in this part of the process new ideas but I believe most of the things I kinda already knew that I wanted Like for instance this tab right here that I put on the construction phase, I felt that this was no longer what I wanted, I felt it was too weak and too ugly, so I replaced it for this piece of plastic right here that I had on my collection to make an air vent for the robot. And in case you're wondering, this came from a dead scanner. Before I glued that in place though, I added the tabs of the air vents and these steps are actually leftovers from MDF that was used on the laser cutter. And once all the tabs were glued and secured, I glued the whole thing to the chest of the robot. I did some finishing with some epoxy putty and I also added some spherical imitations on the body with my Dremel tool. I really don't know why this is there, but I just think it looks cool. From the very beginning I knew that I wanted some kind of rails protecting the shoulder of this robot and I'm going to show you guys the technique that I used to make this. More specifically I'll show you guys how to make a guide to make the angles for these rails so real quick this is not like a full tutorial or anything but grab yourself some thick paper and some masking tape and the idea here is to position the paper around the angle that you're trying to create the rail for and try to mimic this angle in paper so that you have a guide to bend the wire Masking tape is really forgiving so if the angle is not 100% correct you can like force it and put it into the right position. When you feel that you have the right shape just draw the sh overall shape of the rail where you want the curves to be and etc. And then use some hard tools or things that have the exact radius that you're trying to bend the wire into.
when I finished the first rail I just thought it was too big for the robot and I actually wanted it to be like half the size it was so I just cut my guide my paper guide in half with my precision knife and as you can see the new one have half the size of the first one half the height as you say and then I just had to make two of these one for each side when I had two of these identical shapes with the same size and angles I could attach them to the body as you can see I put this green plastic ring just to hide the hole and kind of act like the attachment point I really like adding air vents to my robots so this right here is a button from a dead printer and I will use that to create another air vent in the front of the robot Before I glued that on the body, I added this pipe mesh that I have, I have a huge collection of them just to add more detail and make the model interesting. And it is kind of a struggle to glue this mesh to the plastic button, but I believe it all pays out by the end. The shoulders of this robot was looking a bit too empty for my taste, so I made some holes to add some more details to it as well. In the front of the chest of the robot I also glued this keyboard key and you guys will see that many many times during this build I have a huge collection of dead laptop keyboard keys and I really think if you wanna scratch build something really keep this because they are beautiful and they make for great details to robots and mechanical stuff. I did this third rail of camera and then I just had to glue that in place for the front of the chest and now I'm happy I feel like this body can really hold to some damage and do some heavy work. After putting that in place I added some more details, some more rails and tiny adjustments and now I feel that the body is done. Moving on to the next step. You guys remember in the beginning of the video that I said that I had some details and some design choices in the back of my mind throughout the whole process. And this is no different. From the very beginning I knew that I wanted this robot to have a third arm 
something that would hold some sensors or cameras or maybe even a torch or something to help the process of repairing robots and as you can see I reached for my dead Wi-Fi router antennas collection they are awesome for that job I glued this plastic tube here to the back of the robot and this is where the uh, third arm will come out of And with this attachment point worked out, I could just worry about the arm itself. To create it, I was just gluing the pieces together, but making sure that I had the mobility by the end of this process. These antenna joints are really really good, and they can really keep some position even with some weights added to it so if you have some dead Wi-Fi routers just don't throw them away keep them because they are awesome for that job by this time I already knew that I wanted some array of sensors in the tip of this third arm so once again I grabbed some plastic pieces that looked great and could work as a sensor array and I started gluing them together CA glue sometimes is not the best glue for plastic so in this case I'm also adding some baking soda to make it more sturdy and durable. And this white plastic round thing here just perfectly connects to the point, the tip of the third arm so I was quite happy about it. So then I just had to keep adding pieces and creating the structure, the overall shape of this sensor array. Right here I'm looking for round things, round pieces that may look like a camera or something like that. I want to just take a moment right here to kind of acknowledge the support that some of you guys have given me on my coffee account and thank you so much guys this is really really helpful at the moment I'm kind of all in in this channel so thanks a lot and if you want to do the same thing the link to my coffee account is on the description box if you can't no big deal I know these are tough times so stick around subscribe like if you like the content and as always thanks so much And this is the end result of this third arm. I just had to cover that in primer. I'll do that later on this video. Moving on to the hands of the robot. I was kind of anxious to work on the power drill driver for the robot but before I did that I really had to make the hands first so this is what I did next. As you can see I used this plastic ball to make a ball joint for the wrist and a piece of acrylic to make the shape, the basic shape of their hand. I did some chains on the shape with my mini disc sander. There's a video of this mini disc sander here on the channel, you should check that out if you want to make your own. And then with my Dremel tool I carved some concave shape to glue the ball joint to the hand, to the base shape of the hand.
again as always I'm using baking soda to make the bond stronger and then with my sharpie I marked where I wanted the fingers to be and since this is a robot not a human figure I decided to make only three fingers just to make my life a little easier here the piece of acrylic that I used was too flat and uninteresting so again I grabbed some keyboard keys and added to the overall shape The thing with keyboard keys is that it has a little of a concave shape on the top of it so I always do some sanding to hide this. Now I'm drilling the holes to hold the wire that would give structure to the fingers. To make each finger I'm going to use this plastic tube here but I'll spare you guys from seeing me drill a hole through all these 20 plus pieces of plastic. I wanted to pose the fingers before adding the final touches so this is why I'm using some aluminum wire inside of the fingers. This way I can make little adjustments to the hand before adding the power drill. And this CA glue is not holding anything in place, it just prevents it to be falling all the time when I'm posing it. I think the hand turns out nice, of course there is this gap between each segment of each finger but I'll close that with epoxy putty later on. And I was anxious to see the results so I threw a coat of primer just to show you guys how it turns out in the end. Now that I have both hands done, at least the basic shape of it anyways, I can start working on the power drill driver. So I put this plastic tube here to check the proportions and kind of figure out a size for this power drill and use that as a reference. Off camera I did this rectangle with round corners to be kind of the main body of this power drill. And then I looked at my collection of pieces for shapes that would match that and make the power drill look cool. And this one right here looked good and matched the overall shape but it needed some work first. glued that in place with CA glue and I'm kinda imagining that this is the front of the power drill. I just had to kinda cover this open area 
to attach the pieces that would make the the chuck of the drill. And I'm always checking it against the hands to see if the sizes match and if it looks good. I believe this is the project that I use the most amount of keyboard keys. Once again I'm using this metal mesh, this pipe metal mesh to make the air vents for the power drill. And this can look really good, you just have to make sure to not dump the whole thing in paint because it will clog the mesh. Now I can start working on a handle for this power drill that would fit into the right hand of the robot. And I'm kinda creating the shape of this handle with some pieces of MGF, laser cut MGF as always. and then added a thin coat of primer just to see the whole thing coming together I'm not totally sure about the design of this tool but I'm really happy with the overall shape and size so I may redo that on the future but for now this is a good placeholder I believe the body is really close to its final shape I may add some things here and there but then I threw a coat of primer and I also threw a coat of primer on the third arm because I believe this is really close to its final shape as well and this is the end of this video I'm going just to show you guys a couple of shots where the whole thing is assembled together so that you guys can see the robot finally standing up with all its attachments and tools if you come this far on the video, I really really thank you, leave me a comment, thumbs up if you like what you saw here. Uh, this is the final shot here, as you can see the robot is almost 13 inches high, so I can give you guys the idea of the size of this thing. But this is it for now, and of course, thanks for watching.